All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jennifer Shaw is about to come on. Just blow your mind in terms of what you can do to create more wellness, to create more health and aliveness in your life. Before we go into that, let's talk about the announcements specifically for you, a world-changing human being and entrepreneur. Let's figure out how we can support each other. Number one, if you love this show, definitely share it with people who want to hear more, who want to become their greatest possible self, who want to be empowered in all areas of life. So share it with people if if you are loving this show. Number two, if you are a world-changing leader yourself and you want to get your message out through this 12-hour marathon, message me. would love to talk to you about being a guest on the show in the future. And then number three, if you want to create your own platform like we've created with this 12-hour marathon, create your own podcast, get your message out to the world in your way. I love helping people launch their podcasts in 90 days or less. So if any of those sound like a blast for you, definitely share us out and get in contact with me. You can email me, chris at b your gps.com facebook.com forward slash th3 burn send me a message always check in my uh, messages for new requests and then lastly find me on instagram as well you can dm me there at i am millionaire chris thanks so much and i appreciate you being here next up is the itunes review of the week this week it's by feminine one and feminine one says chris burns podcast is filled with knowledgeable speaker and thought leaders Love it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Feminine One. I appreciate you. And we always love that feedback. We love when people say, hey, here's what you're doing well. Here's what we really like about the show. And here's what we would improve or do differently next time. So I appreciate you. If you want to get the latest updates and episodes, we release a new episode every day on uh, the podcast. You can go get it on iTunes. You can visit our website and subscribe. Whatever your platform is, just search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self and you will find us. Thanks so much in advance for doing that. I appreciate you. So this woman who's about to come on, she's going to, like I said, blow your mind in terms of wellness, in terms of what you can do. And she is in one of the most uh, thriving wellness capitals of the world, I would say, San Diego. She's out there thriving and empowering a ton of people. So make sure you stay tuned all the way through till the end because you never know what one idea can transform the rest of your life. Uh, be taking notes. Be ready to implement and take action on these things because it's good to hear great wisdom and ideas, and it's even better to take action and implement it and embody it. In fact, that's everything. Just knowledge alone is not enough to really make the difference. So get ready to implement, get ready to take the next steps with Jennifer so she can support you on your wellness and really start thriving, okay? Let's introduce introduce her and then we'll bring her on the screen. Dr. Jennifer Shaw has been in the health and wellness field for over 15 years. She is a doctor of physical therapy, a sought after yoga instructor with expertise in anatomy, alignment and injury prevention teaching multiple trainings a year for other yoga instructors and she has been helping people overcome emotional and physical blocks to reach their optimal health through the creation of simple habits and anyone anyone can implement these to incorporate them into their daily routine she is passionate about this subject subject because in 2009 she was struck by a car while riding her bike and lived through eight months of pain pills followed by years of chronic pain. She uses her journey back to thriving as the base of support for those she helps. So she has a lot of uh, common ground to be able to relate to you on, and we're blessed to have her here with us today. Dr. Jennifer, are you ready to rock the house, Superwoman? I am ready. Woo, woo, you're ready. Awesome. We are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thanks for being here, Jennifer. I, I really appreciate you uh, making the time to share with our audience about all that you've learned, all that you've grown through, and I know you're going to have a ton of gold to share with us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's such an honor. Yes, I love it. So we're going to dive right into the theme of the day which yeah. is who are you around? Who are your five closest associates? And I'm not necessarily asking who are your five closest associates, but I'm asking what does this mean to you and how has it impacted your life, Jennifer? That's actually been a really powerful theme over the last few years of my life. And it was something that I always heard, but was brought more to my attention, I'd say about three years ago as mm. I really, so five and a half years I lived in chronic pain. I, I was what I would call small. I was the small mm. version of myself. Yeah. When I started to gain my health back and I started to uh, begin that journey, I really started to pay attention to who was in my life uh, mm. because different people had different things to say as I was trying modalities to feel better and who really had my back or who was trying to keep me small, mm. right? Wow. Uh, this subject kept coming up to me from mentors of mine, coaches mm. of mine, and 
uh, people in my life where it was, you know, who are you surrounding yourself by? Who's cheering you on? Who's trying to hold you back? Mm. Uh, and then as I progressed into that journey of entrepreneurship, that, that like really sunk in of God, how many people do you call? And you're like, I'm going to quit my job. And <laughs> you know the reaction. They're like, but your pension and you only have 27 more years. And like all those things, like you have to really oh think about gosh. who those people are. But then I'm going to take it a step further yeah. of that, that five people. And this was something that came to my attention maybe like two years ago. Mm. It's not only that you're the sum emotionally and spiritually and physically of those five people, you're going to look and see, are you in the same shape as them? Probably. Right. right. But also financially and people forget that financial one. So they say, if you sum up the average income of the five people you spend the most time with, you're probably right in that bracket. Mm. Wow. wow. You want it to go up, you go up with the people you surround yourself by. I love it. So that, that awareness really played a huge part in your journey of, Hey, how, how is this, impacting me how am i impacting them and how are they impacting me it's like this relationship really getting curious and engaged about what's what's the relationship that's going on here and how are we influencing each other and to create your own uh journey to thriving and get back to that place and and really recreate that regenerate that and also not only health and wellness and and emotionally and spiritually but also financially it's like who are the biggest influences on my life how can i really engineer that so that i'm thriving in all areas of life mm -hmm, absolutely it goes back to that old adage of you know don't take advice from somebody who's never been in your shoes so, mm. so you can't take advice in health from somebody who's sitting there a hundred pounds overweight. You can't take advice in uh, business from somebody who's never started their own business and has worked a nine to five their whole life. Yep. You, know? yep. you really have to look at where that input is coming yeah. from. Yeah, I love it. I love it, Jennifer. So this is great. And I want to dive into more of your story and your journey. Before we go into that place, though, I just want you to share in your own words what you stand for, what your clients come to you for. I mentioned it in your bio, but we'd love to hear from you uh, why you're so passionate. In, not why, but what you're so passionate about, so to speak. Absolutely. Yes. It's, um, it's a story that I, I love to share. And I think by sharing it, I've changed many, many lives. Um, and I hope to change many more. And I know it's changed mine. I was just talking to somebody yesterday who was in a similar accident to mine. And uh, she's like, I'm glad that you don't say I'm sorry you were an accident. I'm like, well, I'm not sorry you were an accident. Like that was a bummer that happened to you. And she's like, she was expressing to me the same thing I express to people. I am so grateful mm. at this point in my life that I got hit by a car 10 years ago. Wow. And I know some people are like, like, what? How is that a thing? But like leading up to this day, I was a professional cheerleader for eight years. I was 12% body fat. I was super fit. I had everything going for me. I was three weeks into my physical therapy career. I mean, I did seven years of college to be a physical therapist and I'm riding my bike and this lady's not paying attention at a stop sign. And my life is literally taken from me in a day. I'm on, you know, I, severe amounts of pain, mm. eight months of 30 plus pills a day, being told by the head of neurosurgery that I would be dependent on these things for the rest of my life. Uh, and I just, I made a decision. It was three days shy of eight months when I was told this was going to be my life sentence. Mm. And I went home and I cried like any good 25 year old would do probably drank too much wine, you know, <laughs> but then the next morning I woke up and was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm in charge of this. I'm not letting somebody else tell me what I'm going to do. So, so I took all my pills, I put them in a shoe box and I put it, it was a blue sketcher shoe box. So girls, you can picture what I'm saying exactly. Right. <laughs> that blue shoe box. I put it up in the closet and I was like, and I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Wow. Uh, and, and I rode this rocky road for many years and it was very, very lonely. Mm. Um, of like, I'm going to try acupuncture, cupping, massage. Mm. Uh, I'm going to try physical therapy, essential oils, yoga, mindfulness, meditation. And along the way, every different person in my life had an opinion about what I was doing, but mm. none of those people in my life had ever been in chronic pain like I was. Right. So I felt so alone. Right. Uh, and five and a half years after my accident, I was introduced to essential oils and I actually tried them to prove the girl wrong. Mm. I said to her, I'm going to buy these from you just to show you they won't work. <laughs> like that's not the right way to go about this but that was where my mentality was so i tried it uh and within six weeks i was pain free for the first time in five and a half years wow and that was the day that my journey of sharing my life with people my openness my vulnerability of like this is what i've been through mm. i get it 
I can help you. That's when it started because people look at me and they're like, well, you're in super good shape. You're young, you're healthy. You have this business and all this. I'm like, you don't know the rocky road somebody went through to get to where they are. You're just seeing my my stop right now, my destination. So Hmm. I love helping people who are just struggling and it could be a small struggle of, you know, a breakup. It could be a big struggle of chronic pain or losing a child or dealing with cancer or whatever it be. I, everyone's struggle is huge for them right now. The bump in the road that they're looking at is huge for them. So I like to hold hands with people and help them through that physically, spiritually, emotionally, uh, and give them the support that they need because we all deserve to get to the other side. Mm. I posted something about this on social media yesterday about, um, you know, going through kind of hard times. And uh, the reminder that I always give people is you have a 100% track record of making it through everything that's ever been handed to you in your life this far. Yeah. Right. So that's what I like to do is I like to give people that hope and I like to help them on that journey and and Mm. just help people realize that it's just one small habit compounded on a small habit compounded on a small habit to get us from A to Z. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And you really, you activate the greatness in people when you say, hey, you've already overcame anything that you've been faced with in your life. So like chances are you'll be able to get through whatever you're dealing with right now. And it just reminds them like, oh yeah, I can. I am resourceful. I am powerful. I am unstoppable. Let's go, you know? And it just really uh, re- reinvigorates them, gives them that fuel to, to believe, you know? Because it's like we are, we're a product of what we think is going to happen and how we think about a situation. It sounds like you were really resigned about your your um condition you know you're like i've tried everything i've I, like please show me show me this new thing that's gonna work all right come on bring it to me i totally am gonna prove you wrong and and thankfully <laughs> yeah, that that uh that that hurt you know because it's that can't that comes from a place of hurt like i'm so pissed off i'm so frustrated i'm so overwhelmed i'm so done with this like trying to find something but like because you were at some level open and you know some level divinely guided to to overcome it like you you got brought a solution that actually made the difference for you and that's awesome yeah yeah Yeah, thank you i appreciate that yeah yeah that's beautiful so at that point you started really opening up to share about your journey why was that important for you to to be vocal about what you had gone through and to share about that why what like what was the switch that that happened that said now it's time to share now it's important and essential for me to share i i was frustrated that nobody had told me any of these things before Mm. i I was frustrated from the beginning like i was frustrated that my doctors didn't know to tell me to go to yoga yeah i i was frustrated yoga was huge part of my healing physically and spiritually um so much and nobody told me to do it. I was Mm. frustrated that, uh, my doctors didn't know to send me to an acupuncturist to get cupping and gua sha and Mm. and meridian work. And, and, uh, or even think that would like do something. I was just, I was frustrated that somebody hadn't talked to me about essential oils uh, before that point. I, I was like, why, why is nobody talking about these things? And if I'm frustrated that I was in that situation for five and a half years and no one was talking to me about it, then I needed to be the person that, decided to talk yeah I, I needed to be the person that decided to create a platform and a space where it was okay for people to come and get advice uh, mm-hmm. and and being a doctor of physical therapy with a medical background i feel i can be um really open-minded about the two sides yeah. and say to people like hey you know you're dealing with this health struggle the doctors are going to be able to help you in so many ways here mm-hmm. But here's where they're going to fall through the gaps and here's where you can help yourself. And that's the biggest thing that I love to teach is I, yeah, I'm the vessel of the knowledge mm-hmm. and, and I'm, I'm able to empower people. But my biggest thing is to be able to put the tools in other people's hands so they can help themselves yeah. because they don't need me forever. I mean, mm-hmm. I always joke that I make friends for a living because once I work with somebody and I'm, uh, I help them kind of move forward with their life, like I want to see them succeed forever. Like I want to mm-hmm. see that keep going. So, so I keep that relationship with people, but I don't want them to rely on me to be Mm. healthy. I want them to have the tools to be healthy. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. And I, th- I think that's so important. What a, what a powerful distinction. Because I think a lot of service providers today, um, first of all, they have to get over this, this self-image, like I'm not worthy and yada, 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 to be able to share about their services and, and the transformation that they've gone through. And it sounds like you were just like, man, I know it, I have to share about this. You know, I know I have to get this message out to the world. So you're being bold and courageous. And I don't care what people think. I don't care if they're judging me. I know that people need this because you suffered. You're like pissed off because like, why didn't I get this information? And you're not going to tolerate that happening to people who are looking for answers. So that's the first challenge. And then the second challenge is to like be dependent on clients because like we we love the inspiration. We love the wellness. And we also love talking to entrepreneurs who are like, how am I growing my business? How do I make a bigger impact? And I think that's super important to not be attached and um, like needy and and needing someone, needing a client to stay there. It's like, you're like, hey, I'm going to give you everything I I got. I'm going to empower you to fly, to spread your own wings so that you can be your greatest possible self. And I'm sure there's going to be ways that we can support each other and keep growing together. But I just want you to fly. I want you to get your power back. I want you to to be free. You know, it's like free from pain, free from suffering. And I, I just really hear you empowering people to be free again. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That is it. Uh, mm. And I empathize with people who, uh, Maybe like the the simple way to say it's like the haters that are like, don't believe what I'm saying or think I'm up to like voodoo or whatever. Mm. Cause I was one of them. I, I didn't believe in the stuff that worked for me. I mean, <laughs> I remember being like, I am a doctor of physical therapy. I am research-based. This shenanigans isn't going to help me. Like, right, right. And now I'm like, I, I mean, I even, my friends laugh at me when I'm like, oh God, I, go, I need to go home and stage my house and myself really fast. I'll call you when I'm done. They're like, who are you? because it's just so like i i've grown so much but i i think because i came from that place of complete western to bridging with the eastern and the complete um side of disbelief and not thinking it would help to Mm. where i am now being so open-minded i can Mm. empathize and welcome people's opinions without taking it personal when they have something negative to say about you know the journey i'm on or what i'm sharing or things like that it's just kind of like okay Yeah, this is great. And I want to get really specific on a listener who's in the audience who might be a bit skeptical, who might be a bit closed off, uh, resigned, unhopeful about finding a solution for whatever it is. You know, I think I think we could talk about wellness. We could talk about, hey, how do like people being resigned in their finances? Like, man, I just got all this debt. Like, how am I going to break through people be resigned in their relationships? Like, oh, my gosh, like I'll never get a great relationship, the man or the woman in my dreams. For someone who's like like closed off like that to possibility, uh, what did you do to be able to open yourself back up to 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 receiving a solution and and really having that breakthrough? I I think for me it was a place of no options. Like mm. I was I was in such a dark place, uh, and I was so. I mean, I I think if you had told me that if I rubbed dog poop on my back, it would help my back feel better, I might do it. (laughs) But I I would judge you for it. I'd be like, I'm going to do this. That's disgusting. And I don't think it's going to work. But like, I was, I was at such, I was at such a low point from being Mm. such an athletic person and a professional athlete. And, you know, I, I was always, I was a varsity athlete from seventh grade. So Mm. I, I was this person that had this persona. And then I was five and a half years into this depth of like who I don't even know who this person is I and I was so desperate for something to work that I was willing to try it Mm. and then as things started to work I got more open-minded and then when I really started to get my health back uh I think the biggest change for me was to listen so when I started to get deeper into Reiki work and energy work and uh, even just meditation and things like post kind of the pain going away, being rid of the chronic pain, it was that I would stop and I would listen. I would actually listen to people's experiences. I would, I would listen to what people were saying their journeys were like, I would listen to, you know, podcasts about these things that I was skeptical about. And Mm. instead of being judgmental from the beginning, I was taking the time to pause and say, okay, this obviously works for people. I don't understand it. Let me listen and see if I can figure out more. Mm. And then because I was starting to hear more stories and be more open to like really diving deeper into the spirituality and the yoga and and things, uh, 
I just started to experience it within myself yeah. and I started to notice how I, I felt and listening to how I felt. So it was really about just like pausing, stopping my opinions and listening to myself and those around me about these options. So in the beginning, it came out of desperation. And in the later years, it came out of the ability to actually pause. Beautiful, beautiful. So, you know, what I hear is that you're at this point of like rock bottom, like I'm, I'm just done being, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? Like that, that famous phrase. So you were at that point, and I want to first address people who may not be at that point yet, um, may not be at that, like, you know, I'm just done with this. If you are, like, kind of suffering in, in quiet quiet uh, misery, you know, and you've, you've kind of gotten comfortable with that, just really ask yourself, what's it going to be like if this continues for another three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years? Like, would you be okay with that? What, what would be the quality of your life? What would, what would happen if that was your reality? Like, I found that kind of future pacing, looking out in the future and, and asking myself, what happens if this continues? That, like, really, it starts to dig the, the pain in a little bit. So I get to take some immediate action. I'm, I'm like, moved into action. Um, so that's first off. And then also, on the flip side, I don't want to always be about pain, but what could you do? You know, like, what, what, what could be possible if you were pain-free? If you, if you had this resolved, what would that be like for you? And you might say, this is impossible. There's no way. I'm sure, Jennifer, you were at the point where, nothing's going to work for me. You ask me that question, that's BS. Like, yeah, right. Okay, I get it. And let's suspend disbelief. Let's suspend, you know, all the judgment stuff and say, what would it be like? And just open up that that possibility uh, to that again. I think that that would be super valuable. Is that something that you would recommend as well, Jennifer? Yeah, I, I always go back to the quote, uh, no, if nothing changes, nothing will change. Mm. Mm. So whether you're dealing, I remember a really good friend of mine was driving an hour and a half each way to work, super stressed out poor health, like detached from her family, stressful job. Like you, we can all kind of relate to a situation like that. Right. Uh, and she got this really great job offer in another state. And she called me and was like, I, I can't do it. I can't pack up the house. How am I going to get there? How am I going to make this happen? Mm. And I just said, I was like, if nothing changes, nothing's going to change. Mm. So if you don't take this new job and you don't take that leap, right. Five years down the road, this is just going down wow. further. So whether wow. that's a job or anxiety or pain or, you know, emotional abuse or whatever it is you're in. If you don't decide that it's okay to change something, nothing's going to change. Mm. So it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be huge, but yeah, that's, that's the, the big thing that I always teach people in that, that energy frequency of the acceptance of, mm. um, of negative, the acceptance of, of frustration, of irritation, of unhappiness. You're, you're just going to collect more of that energy. Wow. So, what can you do to bring that energy level up? Yeah, absolutely. I love I love that you say that um, because it's like really talking about what are those emotions that you're accepting into your life, those thoughts, those emotions, um, and then how, how to shift those and where to shift those to. Can you get into a little bit more of the specifics of how we might be able to be aware of if we're feeling and staying at that low vibration and how to get into a, a higher frequency, higher emotions? Absolutely, yeah. I, uh, I think as a society in general, we do not take enough time to just be, mm. right? So we are constantly, and, and I was listening to Eckhart Tolle yesterday, uh, and he's incredible. I love, I love his work. But so he was talking about the idea of we're never present. Present's the only moment that really exists, yeah. but we're never present because we're always thinking about what's next. Mm. So like, mm because I'm in this process of talking to you about it, I'm sitting here thinking I have a Reiki appointment right after this, right? But before that kind of going there, I wasn't thinking that because I'm a hundred percent present. I'm like yeah. super engaged in our conversation. Yeah. Uh, but it's because we have something going on, right? Mm. So how often when you're just sitting, are you really just present? Mm. Are you feeling your feels? It's, it's kind of how I explain it. I'm like, I always say to people, I'm like, I, I felt all the feels. I felt them, I cried them, I yelled about them, I felt the feels. Uh, but in our society, we don't really accept that. Mm. Like somebody walking up to you, like, you, you know, you think about it, you're at a coffee shop and you run into, I run into you, I haven't seen you in a long time. And I'm like, hey, Chris, how you been? And you just look at me and you're like, I'm a mess. And you just start crying and you tell me about like all the time in your life. Like, what do I do? I like back up and I'm like, 
it was really good to see you. <laughs> right? So we, like you can picture that, right? But we don't give permission in our society to sit and be mm. and feel. Mm. So we don't do it. So when we're sitting on the couch, we're thinking about all the things we need to be doing, right? Mm. And um, so I think the simplest thing there is to just be. And that sounds impossible to a lot of people. And the mm. best thing to do to be is breathe. Yes. So, so the um, American Institute uh, of Stress said the best stress reducer is breath, is mm. breathing. Uh, and back to Eckhart Tolle, I, I, I do, I love his work, but he has this quote that, so be aware of your breathing. Notice how this takes attention away from your thinking and create space. So I have a super simple breathing exercise. It's so simple. My three-year-old niece can do it. So if she can do it, so she'll have a temperature tantrum and I'm like, okay, baby, we, what are we going to do? And she's like, <gasps> <sighs> she doesn't breath it's like the cutest thing and then you're like how are you feeling but if a three-year-old can do it we can do it right yeah so what i recommend you do is you take a minute of your day like we mm. can all do it and i like to use essential oils with it so i'll take an essential oil like i love peppermint and i'll put it in my hand and i'll i'll breathe it in but it's a mm. four by four by four by four breath mm. so you breathe in for four seconds you hold your breath for four seconds you breathe out for four seconds and you hold your breath for four seconds and you just do that breath and you do it for about a minute. And then when you're done, you're not done yet because you need to take the next minute and you need to literally think about how you feel. Wow. How you feel? Is your stress level down? Did your heart rate lower? Is your mind calm for a moment? Can you think more clearly? Right? So imagine if we just set a timer a couple times a day to just breathe and give ourselves to feel what we're feeling you're going to be able to be much more in tune with those energies and how what's frustrating you and what's the first thing that pops back into your mind. So if you finish that exercise and the first thing that pops back into your mind is somebody you're mad at, well, mm -hmm. guess what energies you're living in? Yeah. You're living in anger and frustration. So then wow. instead of saying, oh, I don't want that thought, saying, you know, okay, thank you for that thought. I'm, you know, frustrated with this person, but I'm going to flip it and say, I'm really uh, grateful for the lesson ABC that I learned from this relationship. Yeah. So can you flip that frustration to gratitude? And that's one of gratitude is one of the best ways to lift energy. Yes. I love it. I love it. So the breathing is super important and I love that you share about that. And then I also love how after you're done breathing, the whole objective is to be present and to feel the emotions that you're feeling. And I think that it can be easy just to, to breathe. And then the first thought that comes back in or like what tries to disrupt that peace and that sense of centeredness, that is the thing to go to work on. That is the thing to heal. That is the thing to be grateful for. That is the thing to release. And I, that's like the first time I've ever heard um, that to know like what vibration are you in? Where, where are you living? Because the first thing to come back in, that's like your dominant dominant experience and to be able to raise up to a higher frequency, higher energy, love, appreciation, gratitude, then we really have to work through those lower vibrations and to get to a higher one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And journal Beautiful. about it. So mm. you, that, what comes up for you, it needs to get out. It don't, I always hear people like, I'm going to just push those emotions down. I'm going to just push them back down. I'm going to ignore those. Oh, well, no. they just pile on each other. Oh. So don't keep pushing them down. Your solar plexus is full. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like give it, get it out. Journal. Yeah. I journal every mm. morning. And mm. one of my, my things is I just brain dump. But then at the end of my journaling, I write 10 things I'm grateful for. Wow. Some days it's like, I'm grateful I woke up. I'm grateful I have sheets. I'm grateful I'm breathing. Like yeah. some days I'm like struggling and other days I'm like hugely gratitude full of so many things that I'm just like, ah, there's so much to be grateful for. But it, being grateful on a good day and a bad day is easy, right? But being yeah. grateful on a bad day is where the work is at, where the yeah. magic is. Man, and I think it's like, it's training ourselves too. like, what, what do we focus on? Like, if we are constantly able to find the gratitude and things, no matter how bad they are, you know, like for you to say, I'm grateful for for the, the car accident, right, that that helped me to get present that helped me to rebuild this, this paradigm of I can conquer anything, no matter what comes at me, I'll be able to get through it. And also all the, the good energy that you've been able to create and cultivate in your life because you had to like you were done in that low vibration you were done in that 
fr- in that low frequency. So you're like, okay, I have to be loving. I have to be grateful. I have to be expansive or else I'm going to stay there. And so it was like, it was a must for you. And now you're living it and sharing that with other people, which is rad. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So cool. So cool. So I want to hear a little bit more about your journey because from that point to now, you've, you've, grown yourself a lot you've done a lot of uh, you know different modalities to learn to expand your your capacity to be able to coach and lead other people to provide those breakthroughs and transformations what's that journey been like for you what have, what have been some of the the principles and wisdom that you picked up along the way especially around uh, you know not being so overwhelmed and stepping into that thriving energy mm, yeah i it's it's an ongoing journey and i don't think it's ever going to end uh, so anybody that really thinks there's a destination on this personal work is is all wrong. <laughs> uh, it's a daily, daily thing. Uh, and I, I think my biggest lesson I've learned is I am in charge of what I do with the 24 hours that I'm given each day. Mm. And my one of my friends who I took her workout class yes, or Monday, she, she said something at the very beginning. She said, and she's a hard instructor. She kicks your butt. And at the very beginning, she said, you know that this hour is only 4% of your day. Mm, 4%. Wow. You can do it for 4%. So mm. when you're getting tired, try a little harder, right? But mm. I think that's life and personal development in general is like, you're in charge of those 24 hours. And the more aware you are of what you choose to do with those 24 hours mm. is the more fulfilled you're going to be. And, and one of the biggest lessons I've learned, and I'm, God, I'm still learning, is the power of no, um, mm. or what you say yes to. Yeah. So we say yes in our society, and I am guilty as charged. I, I do this big time. I say yes for the better of the masses. I say yes for my family. I say yes because I don't want someone to be offended that I said no. I say mm. yes because... I know it's like the right thing to do, even if it's not like self, it's ser- not serving me right now. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's learning that, that it's okay to pause and it's okay to say like, what, what is this situation coming to me? How does it serve me? So I like to ask myself questions when, when anything, social invitation, mm-hmm. business opportunity, even this podcast came my way. Yeah. I have to sit and I have to really say to myself, my, my old instinct would have been like, yes, oh God, yes, I definitely want to do it. It's like everything. Uh, and I was just kind of like throwing spaghetti at all these walls and seeing what stuck and it wasn't true to my soul. So, so now I pause and I'm like, you know, is this to serve somebody else or is this to serve me? Is mm. this to share my message on a bigger platform? Like what, what, what am I going to get out, out of this social interaction that I'm going into? Uh, are the people that I'm going to be around going to be lifting me up and energizing me? Uh, am I going to be saying yes to this, but am I going to be resentful the whole time I'm there or mm. leading up to it or have resentment after, you know, really thinking about what every single yes is to you. And that can be as small as like this, bowl of ice cream you're going to have that at home to as big as do you want to go on a vacation with a certain person do you want to enter in a relationship with a certain person but yes we have the power to to say yes to things so Mm. whether you're saying yes to watching netflix for three hours a night or choosing to listen to a podcast while you work out and then reading a book you're saying yes in both directions yeah being in charge of what you say yes to. Mm, yeah, and I think to add on to that, I love what you said. I think that there's um, rewards and that there's there's payoffs, there's some kind of benefit, and then there's consequences to every action. You can say, hey, like going to the gym is my only option because I, I, I must get fit. I must, you know, work on my body, get in, into the optimal health. Awesome, cool. There's a reward to that, optimal health. There is also a consequence. Maybe you're not spending time with your family. Maybe you're not working on your business. Maybe you're not working on your spirituality, whatever it might be. Um, there's benefits and there's costs to everything. So we just get to see, uh, is this helping me become more of the person who I want to be, the best version of myself? I, what you just said is so powerful. And I, it's having a vision mm. of what you want to be. Yeah. Do you know who you want to be in the next three to five years. Mm. And is this choice you're making today 
bringing you closer to that. So I help a lot of my, uh, my clients and people I work with work through that of like, what even is a vision? <laughs> what, how do you do this? And then from your vision, how do you set goals? Yeah. And, and really, if you have a vision of what you want in mm. three to five years, I know exactly what I want in three That's to five beautiful. years. And, and I, and I work on it regularly and I, I am always evaluating, like, does this decision bring mm. me closer to the person I want to be? I'm not saying like, yeah, you can write things like you want to own the house, the beach, or you want all of these things. It's not the physical things. It's really like, who do you want to be? What legacy you want to be leaving? What impact do you want to mm. have? Uh, and, and a lot of times you had said something about the gym. Mm-hmm. So you made the choice to go to the gym, but does that mean taking time away from your family? Now, on the, the flip side too, yeah, taking time away from your family, but you're also showing your kids yes. that if you have them or your spouse that it's important to take care of yourself. So maybe that teenager of yours is like, hey, dad, can I go to the gym with you tomorrow? Mm. Right? And then those, what, how do those decisions compound on one another? Oh my gosh. There's, influence, ripple effect the people around you. There's so many. There's so many like uh, positive and other than positive consequences for every decision, yeah. you know? It's like, yeah. and I, I really love what you reinforced there because going to the gym, like your health, that's like 1% of your, or 4% of your day, right? An hour or whatever it might be. Uh, essential, in my opinion, like non-negotiable gym every day, working out, getting some kind of activity, walking around, whatever it might be, because that's, it's really Really so so important for our bodies to be moving. Um, so I love that, and also being the role model, being the example, whatever it is. Like people are watching, quote unquote, whether you think they are or not. They're noticing. Like I know with my uh, family, like when I would go out and visit them in Texas, like they have a tendency of eating more hearty foods, right? And I have more. More of a tendency here in Vegas with my girlfriend, we eat really clean. We eat really healthy. So it's like I can go out there and still keep eating the things that I like grew up with and the easy, easy to eat meals that are, aren't as healthy. And what helps me be a better role model and a better example for my dad, especially in my family, is choosing better eating habits. Is saying how can I, how can I still be connected with the family, still love them, appreciate them, accept them as who they are, and be a role model at the same time. And that might take a little bit of of challenging the status quo, stretching, being a little bit more bold. But uh, in the long run, wow, what an impact I'm able to make just with my own choices. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 We think about influence. Uh, in the the idea of our children around us. Like, I don't have kids, but I live with my three-year-old niece. And um, just, I, I was in a not good marriage for myself. It wasn't serving me. And right. what got me actually to wake up and, and walk away mm. was somebody said to me, what you show your niece right now is the relationship she will duplicate in her future. Yes. And I was like, okay. And and we have to think about that in every situation. So kids around us, our mm. siblings, our friends, our parents, they, they, all of it. What, it. what decisions are you making day in and day out that everyone mm. around you is seeing? Mm. Uh, and then on that same note, I always teach the percentages. Yeah. So you don't have to be perfect 100% of the time. So you go to Texas for a week. Can you get real delicious barbecue one of those days? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never do it. <laughs> right? But uh, it's the other 80 percent yes you know it's what did you have for breakfast did you have a green juice and a hard-boiled egg for breakfast while Mm. everyone else had bacon and eggs right Mm. making the decisions to be the true version of yourself that 80 to 90 percent of the time yeah but not having it so strict that you burn out on it Mm. yeah and I, i love this it's like really the choices that we make how are they aligning with the vision of who we want to be and I want to like circle back to that because you mentioned also questions that you ask yourself in every moment, every decision, you know, as much as we're able to, obviously sometimes life happens so fast and we're not even able to like make those resourceful, well thought out decisions. And optimally that's what we do every time, right? We really align, Hey, is this helping me get closer to my vision? Um, one of the things I found in the beginning of my journey is not knowing 
what questions to ask myself, not knowing if the questions were really helping me to get clarity. Uh, I didn't know like what, if I was on track or off track, you know, I didn't have a, uh, um, someone to bounce ideas off of someone to reflect back my own internal thinking and thinking process. And I know that's something that you really help your clients with as well is like being there to guide them through when they are just getting started on their journey, or maybe they've been on their journey for a while, but they just want to take it to the next level. You're there to support them in saying, Hey, like, are you, are you on the right track? Are you clear? Are you like crystal clear on that vision? Are these decisions helping you move forward to that as quickly as possible? And I know that's super invaluable um, for me. Hiring coaches in my, my own life made all the difference to be able to grow as quickly as possible with the least amount of effort and the most amount of joy and, uh, fulfillment and impact. So uh, I just really appreciate what you do for your clients too. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's important to know and be given permission to ask questions. My, my first business coach, Andrea Solander, I, I love her dearly. And um, she taught me so many things in my life. And one of them was that pause and like, mm. ask yourself, are you saying yes to this for yourself or others? Mm. Are you saying yes to this? Cause it's socially what you're supposed to say yes to. Are you saying yes to this? because it's bringing you closer to your end game or mm. because it's a short-term fix to a long-term problem, right? Like, what are you saying yes for? And if you can't ask yourself, I always say like three to five questions, why questions, mm. then you're not digging deep enough because the mm. first answer you get is the, you know, the one you're supposed to have, Yeah. right? Like your why, it's like when you ask yourself your why and doing these things, like, I like to help people. Well, great. That's awesome. You know, but really, why are you doing mm. this? Why, why are you so driven wow. to help people be healthy? And really ask yourself like three to five times, three to five questions around it. So you can really get to the root of it. But she was the first person to give me permission to slow down and, and ask myself those questions. So I stopped reacting to mm. situations and possibilities in life. And I started consciously responding to them. Mm. Um, after some real thought. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, it's like to to get out of scarcity and like lack of time and say, hey, I have more than enough time to think about this. Like if you're pressuring me, trying to make me make a decision or whatever it might be, then it's obviously not the right fit. You know, I don't I don't get pressured. I don't let people push me into something that I'm not totally lined up with and, you know, able to make a powerful, confident decision with. So it's almost like to be able to say no as a default um, first and then like a heck yes if everything lines up or if we feel feel like it's it's a you know a really great opportunity totally and yeah. it literally like i said before it could be as small as do you want to eat that ice cream mm. or, or as big as do you want to date someone or marry someone or move or you yeah. know yeah. it's the big and the small questions but we get tripped up on the small ones and we don't think we need to think about them mm. i was actually looking at my schedule just last night having some amazing amounts of gratitude for where my life is and uh it I remember when I was working like three jobs and every, it was commitment, 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 mm. commitment. Like my whole schedule was just like permanent commitment. And I looked at my <laughs> schedule and I was like, okay, so Monday nights I have a call. I have to be on at six and Wednesday nights I get to teach two yoga classes. Mm. Those are the only commitments that I have week after week on my schedule. Wow. And I was like, whoa, wow. how, this is amazing. Yeah. Look at what I've done for my se my schedule and myself. And it's because, and, and that's not because those are not the only things on my schedule. I fill my schedule with other things that I love and right. fill me up and work for my business. But those are the only two that show up every single week. Mm. That right mm. there, I was like, holy, you really honed in on this saying yes yeah. to just things that serve you. Wow. Uh, and that's a pretty powerful thing to get to from three jobs to three hours a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even my, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and she's saying how like the, the standard coaching format today that's, that's, you know, espoused by a lot of people is four coaching calls a month, right? An hour long uh, coaching call a month. And she's like, well, what if I want the freedom to take like a week off? Like, wouldn't three calls a month be optimal? You know, and, and this is just what I've seen, you know, the four calls a month. But she's like, why don't I create that? Like, if I want the freedom to travel and do what, what I want when I want, which is her ultimate reason for building a business, you know, to, to have the freedom, to have the, the choice, to have the abundance of time and energy and money so that she can do what she really loves even more, then that would be the optimal structure and nobody says like nobody's making her say like do four coaching calls a month like that's not uh, obligation 
it's her business. It's her like creation, whatever she wants it to be. So I love how you are also doing that in your life and in your uh, responsibilities and your ability to serve people in a bigger way. You're like, hey, I got these like two commitments that are uh, really close to me, near and dear to me. And then everything else, like I get to create it. I get to, you know, choose when I have coaching calls. I get to choose the vacations and the the travel and the adventure that I go on because I'm just totally abundant and empowered in in choice and in freedom. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. And go go your girlfriend. That's yeah, awesome. she's she's a powerhouse. She's teaching me a lot. I'm so, 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 so grateful for her. So that's awesome. I want to dive into thriving because I think a lot of people, they get, they get the concept of it. And I think we want to equip them with more strategies or like how to, how, how to be thriving even more. Um, can you go into that a little bit more, maybe define what thriving means to you and, and how you really help your clients get there? Yeah. Have you read the book, The Compound Effect? I'm assuming you have. Yes. Okay. So if you haven't read it and you're listening, go get the book, The Compound Effect. Yes. It, it's not just about business. It's not just about health. It's it's about uh, everything in our lives, mm. right? But mm. I think for me, when we look at thriving, it's, it's more about the – the little decisions that we make over, 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 and over, and over that, that impact each other. So, you know, Webster's Dictionary of Thriving is grow or develop well or vigorously, right? Mm. So interesting definition to grow, to develop, to, you know, to get bigger and, and things, right? But for me, what I teach anybody that wants to learn how to thrive is it's one small decision you make at a time. Wow. So you could look at my life and say, people get overwhelmed when they're, they, they're like, what do you do every day to be your best self? And I'm like, if I sit down and tell you my daily routine hmm. by about 45 seconds, you're going to want to curl up in the corner and cry and think that you can never do what I do. Hmm. Because what I do daily now is a culmination of five years of work of really, truly diving in to create healthy habits and consistent compounding habits. Right. So what I always help people with is your goal today is to thrive more than yesterday, to make mm. one healthier choice than you did yesterday. Wow. So maybe this week your goal is to drink enough water. You guys have probably seen me sip on my water like 10 times already. Oh this yeah. My small water bottle for the record. I drink a ton of water. Chris is like, let me find mine. <laughs> there he yes. goes. <laughs> gotta drink your water right but that's yes. a really simple habit mm. so can you make a conscious effort i will tell you that about 75 percent of the people i talk to do not drink enough water yep you need to drink at a minimum to function half your body weight in water mm. or ounces sorry uh so if you can start to drink a little bit more water every single day to get to the point where consistently every day without thinking about it you're drinking enough water you just began thriving more Right. Mm. Can you make an effort to listen to 15 minutes of a podcast on your way to work instead of the news on the radio mm. and do that for another week and add that on? Congratulations. You're thriving more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What small decision can you make this day, this month, this week, whatever it be? Uh, and, and here's a really simple way to think about it. If you create one tiny, small habit every single week for a year, you have 52 new habits. Wow. 52. And they can be as small as drinking enough water. Go to bed <laughs> five minutes earlier. Put your yeah. phone down before you go to bed. So, so I, I like to make it as simple as I can for people and say that it's just about making one small decision mm. on a consistent basis, whatever that be for you, that is healthier than the old version of you uh, and compounding them on top of one another. And as you do that, every single area of your life will change. Your relationship with yourself will change. Your relationship with those around you will change. Your physical health will change. Your emotional health will change. Your financial situation will change. Your employment will probably change. Like things will change because you are changing. Your energy is changing. So to me, thriving is the compounding effect of many, many, many small habits that are attainable by any single person listening here. Wow. That's so beautiful. I love it. It's, it's so simple. 
better mm-hmm. today than you were yesterday. Whatever that might look like. If it's you know waking up five minutes earlier, going to be going to bed five minutes earlier. If it's drinking a little bit more water. If it's whatever you know, getting a little bit of exercise, taking a minute a couple times a day to to relax, to breathe. There's so many micro steps and and micro things that we can do that make a big difference over the long term. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's, it, if you can look at health in two different ways, uh, you can look at health in the all or nothing game mm. that doesn't work. That's why yo-yo dieting exists. That's mm. why there's every fat diet or uh, you know exercise routine in the world. Or you can look at health in the long term effect of what can you change mm. in the core being of yourself to be better tomorrow. Uh, and and this was reframed really well for me about um, probably like six months ago from a friend and, and I was struggling with some emotional stuff just from my divorce and things. And uh, she looked at me and she said, you know, Jen, you were doing the best then with what you knew then. Yeah. And today you're doing the best with what you know now. Mm. So, so don't judge back then Jen on what Jen knows now. So really thinking about that when you're talking about thriving in all areas of your life is you can't look back and be like well if only i had done this five years ago mm. well you wouldn't be the person you are so so just say i'm gonna choose to do this today yeah or even even if you were more fit in the past you know i'm sure when you had your your injury you're like man i just like I wish I had that again. And I, if only I had that, that level of, of uh, flexibility and body mobility and all this kind of stuff, right? Like that level of health and wellness. Well, that was the past. You have what you have. Now, what are you going to do with it? How do you take the next step? And I think that that's a, a lot of people make it such a big deal. They make the, the all or nothing, like you said, they, they want everything right now, yesterday, uh, and they don't give themselves the grace and the patience to really take it one step at a time. And I think it's, it's super powerful. Yeah. And, and remember comparison's a thief of joy. So whether you're comparison, comparing mm. to your old self or you're mm, comparing yeah. to the person next to you, uh, I get this a lot I, in yoga. I'm, I am extremely fit. If you look on my social media, you'll be like, girl, you don't have all those injuries you say you have. Well, I promise you. <laughs> um, I am in yoga all the time and I have students come up to me or people in classes and they're like, I can, your yoga practice is beautiful. I can never do what you do. And I just mm. look at them and I'm like, 10 years ago, I was hit by a car and I have a spinal cord injury and I can't, I couldn't touch my toes. Mm. I shown up on my mat every day. And then they're like, wow. And I'm like, so you can do anything you decide that you want to do. Wow. And I'm the one, I'm gonna give you permission right now. Mm. Do it, mm. make the decision to do it. Yeah. But it's, it's that comparison. So it's really easy to stand next to me and when I'm on my mat and super fit, doing handstands and stuff and people are like, oh, if only. And I'm like, if only you show up for yourself every single day. Yeah. That's only if only here. Yeah, yeah. It's like, if only is great. And you want the, you want the keys? You want the keys? You really want the keys to the kingdom? Okay. Keep showing up. <laughs> Show up. Whether that be for your family, whether that be in your decisions of what you eat or on yeah. your yoga mat or yeah. uh, in, to the gym or mm. reading a book every day or journaling every day, having that morning routine. It's just about you showing up, mm. you holding yourself accountable. Or if you can't hold yourself accountable, finding somebody that can. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I want to kind of, um, put the the bow on top of this and and start wrapping it up and really bring it home with some um of, of the final piece of wisdom around wellness and, and just to give you a heads up we're going to talk about you know kind of the final takeaways what you really want people to get we're going to let people know how they can stay connected with you and continue their journey with you and then of course we're going to do our minute to win it at the end which is like the encouragement and uh the fire and and just like telling people how to be their GPS in your own heart words. Um, but just in terms of this conversation and really empowering people with what we've been talking about, if there's anything that we haven't covered yet that you really wanted to uh, make sure our, our audience knew uh, before we wrapped up, let's, let's touch on that, Jennifer. Yeah, I, I think it was really actually super fun getting to chat with you about this. And, and, and I do, I think people just need to hear that it, they have permission. Mm. Like I'm giving you permission. I am giving you permission now to make better decisions, even if your spouse doesn't like it, to make better decisions for yourself, even if, you know, it in the beginning causes some ripples with your family. You know, I'm giving you permission to create a vision for yourself and change that. 
Mm. Uh, I, I remember sitting down at my desk at the school district. We just got a brand new office and I gotten, I, you know, I make a lot of friends. I get, I, I'm, I love people. I love connecting with people. So the woman in charge of picking who got desks loved me. Well, I got the desk at the window and this yes. woman next to me she's across. She's like, Oh, I'm so happy. I got the window. You must be so excited. Cause you're going to be at this desk for like 27 years. She's like, I only have three more left. And I just looked at her and was like, <gasps> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what? and i was like so taken aback by that i was like i'm gonna sit at this desk for 27 years what are you no talking about way. uh but i i had given myself permission to not let that be my reality right mm. so i it, they were all shaken by my decision but i'm giving you permission to 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 carve your own path to make mm. your own road you know people make roads all the time you you aren't going to be the first or the last and it's uh, not going to be easy, but find people around you that want to help you be the better version of yourself. So whether that be with health goals or um, business goals or things, just surround yourself with those people coming back to the five people. Find your tribe. Yeah. Find your tribe that is going to, you know, pat you on the back instead of pull you down. Mm -hmm. So you take the reins, go for it and, and just get what you want out of life and be okay to dream. You know, we stop dreaming when we're, um, about they say like seven to 12 years old we stop mm. dreaming because at that point we start to hear things like are you smart enough to be that mm. you know oh you know i know you want to play soccer but you're not as fast as the other kids that's when we start to hear those things yeah. and they get ingrained in us so try to go back to your your itty bitty childhood self that they thought they could be a unicorn doctor astronaut actor i don't know <laughs> whatever it was you can be all of them <laughs> Give yourself permission to dream again and then surround yourself with the people that are going to help you get there. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And I love how you circle back around to those five people you're around, the community. <clears throat> really, it's about a community who empowers you in your self-expression, who's constantly giving you permission, who's like, a heck yes, go do it. Whatever it is, be your best. Keep showing up. Keep taking action. And the, the people who are meant to be around you, who have the same values and who are, who are meant to, you know, you're gro meant to grow together because there's seasons of life. Not everyone is on the, the life trajectory that you're on forever. And you get to be great with that. You get to be okay with that. And I also love how you said, you know, in your previous relationship, you're like, hey, it just wasn't serving me and my greatest possible self and my growth anymore. And that's something that, you know, my girlfriend and I, we came together and declared from the beginning is like, hey, we will continue investing in this relationship and contributing to each other and showing up and doing the freaking work and whatever it takes, you know, as long as this is still benefiting both of us. And as long as we're still growing, as long as we're, we still feel, you know, self-expressed and like we're becoming our, our greatest possible selves. But as soon as that goes away, if that ever would go away, then it's like we get to honor each other and say, hey, this is this is where our parts path and I, I, I paths part. But uh, I just really appreciate that when you are in alignment with who you are, your values, what you stand for, the right people are there. The right people keep showing up, keep supporting you. They manifest, the clients manifest, the coaches manifest, the community manifests. And so I really, really love how you, you communicate that, Jennifer. So let's tell people how they can continue their journey with you as one of their core five people who they want to be around the most, Dr. Jen. How do they do that? Awesome. Yeah, please reach out. Um, my favorite thing in the world to do is make new friends. Um, I, I love getting to know people. So you guys can follow me on Facebook or Instagram. It's natural wellness tips. Uh, it's all about where you can find me everywhere. You can check out my podcast, natural wellness tips podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so give it a listen. I'd love for you to check out. I mean, that's just, you know, episodes full of just exactly what me and Chris have been talking about here for the last yeah. hour. So, um, that's definitely a great way to check it out. And then I have a free gift for them. If, if that's cool, Chris, can I yep. share it? With them? Yep, absolutely. So, uh, I love, I love yoga. I love physical therapy. I love alignment and anatomy. And I love helping people show up with confidence because I find that people aren't going to show up to the gym or to the yoga mat with that, with when they don't have confidence in it. Right. Mm. So what I did was I created this on online at home yoga series that helps you gain confidence in your yoga poses and your yoga practice so that you can then show up on your mat in your yoga studio and feel safe and confident. So I have a free gift for you guys. You know, when you go to a class, they always say flow through your vinyasa and people are like talking about all these up dog, down dogs things. And you're <laughs> so maybe that's you and you're confused or maybe you want to learn how to you know advance that more and learn some of the chin stands and harder things that some of us do in class. But go to my, it's, it's a natural wellness tips 
dot info. So mm-hmm. we're actually I lied, naturalwellness.info forward slash vinyasa flow. So naturalwellness.info forward slash vinyasa flow. And you guys can get that for free. It's a free gift for you guys for coming and listening to the podcast. It's a video, an ebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you're going to get access to me and some of my ongoing support. And we get to, you know, become part of my community, part of my natural wellness tips family. And I just look forward to getting to meet you guys. Beautiful. So just to um, correct for the website, it's naturalwellness.info forward slash vinyasa flow. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I, uh, I put it in the comments on Facebook. These will definitely be uh, in the show notes as well, uh, how you can connect with Dr. Jennifer Shaw after this. And uh, we are going to go into the minute to win it in just a second here. So be thinking about what you want what you want to unleash. Uh, before that, though, I also want to just recommend you, every, anyone who's listening, stay connected with Dr. Jennifer Shaw. She is rocking it, sharing some powerful wisdom. She has a podcast so you can connect with her and dive into your, your relationship and connection with her uh, even more. And go have a conversation with her, message her, let her know what you appreciated most about this interview. Um, you know, Definitely tag us on Instagram. Take a screenshot of this interview at I am millionaire Chris and at natural underscore wellness underscore tips. Uh, I believe that's how they would tag you on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. So do that and let us know what you love the most. And Dr. Jennifer, let's give them the minute to win it. Let's go. Okay, guys, seriously, I've said this already through the whole hour. I am giving you permission. So whether you don't feel like your parents are giving you permission, your spouse is giving you permission, your boss is giving you permission, you're giving yourself permission. I am giving you permission to dream, to chase your goals, whether that be health, physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, entrepreneurial. Maybe you wanna write a book. Maybe you wanna start a podcast. Maybe you just wanna take a vacation all by yourself and nobody go with you and you just wanna take a book and be all by yourself for a couple of days. Whatever it is that you're sitting there in your heart, in your soul saying, I need to be a better person tomorrow, just breathe, right? Yeah, I'm giving you, I'm giving you permission. So if you need that permission, if you need someone to pat you on the back and say, it's okay, it's okay to take care of yourself, I'm giving it to you right now. Take it, run with it, do what fills your soul, because if you fill your soul, you will show up better for every other person in your life. They don't need to understand it. They don't need to see why you're doing it. They don't need to make sense of it. You just need to know that you are on your right path. So permission granted, follow your dreams, whether it be a vacation by yourself, or a huge thing like writing a book. You've got this. I got your back. You got it. Dr. Jen has your back. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. You're a powerhouse, and we look forward to growing together and impacting even more people's lives, helping them become their GPS. And everyone, go subscribe to her podcast too. And Dr. Jen, I appreciate you. We'll see you soon, okay? Thank you, Chris. All right, bye.